Hi, I'm RC Jim. Welcome. And uh, today we're going to be having a look at the Hobbywing 60 amp Skywalker ESC. Uh, and uh, we'll also be looking at the program card that goes with it. We'll be showing the programming both uh, with the stick on the transmitter as well as with the program card. One interesting thing towards the end is we'll actually look at the impact on the RPM of the motor uh, having the three different timing settings, low, middle, and high, and see just what that means in terms of performance. How much can you increase it? And this is in particular for a Dual Sky 5050 EA12 um, 716 kV, or sorry, 610 kV uh, motor. And um, yeah, I'll give you a good idea of what happens as you change those timing settings. So, let's get into it. Okay, to get started, we need to uh, program the stick on the, uh, the throttle. And um, so the way we go about that is we've got the transmitter already bound to the receiver. We've tested that uh, when we get it going and we fire it up, that uh, moving the throttle forward a bit makes it blow air to the back. It's rotating in the right direction. Um, then, before we plug it in, we put the stick all the way up to 100%. We um, press on the, uh, we don't press, we rotate the uh, scroll wheel to the right that shows us the um, uh, position of the stick. So we're looking at the throttles. That's the first one that's there. We uh, make sure that the throttle is armed and the throttle is all the way up and it's showing 100 on the um, uh, value there. So with that at 100, throttle stick us all the way up. We then plug her in, everything nice and secure. We get the double beep, we pull it down. You get four beeps and a long beep, and then we unplug it. Okay, that's all it takes to program the throttle, uh, to calibrate the throttle, and that's what you need to do regardless of whether you're programming with a stick or with the um, uh, program card. Now with the program card, that's the other easy way to uh, do things. Uh, beautiful uh, little thing here from Hobbywing. Um, you got a place to plug in the uh, lead that goes to the uh, receiver. So the throttle lead that goes to the receiver plugs in here. If that's got a BEC, a battery elimination circuit, where it's providing power to the receiver, then that's all you need to do. If uh, it doesn't have the BEC, then you also need to plug in power, the power that would normally be going to your receiver over here on the side over there. And I think this can handle either 5 or 6 volts. Okay, um, so we uh, do that. We have this plugged in. And with it plugged in, we want to make sure that the battery is disconnected at the start. It's important that you do these in the right sequence, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, negative is to the right, so we put the black wire on the right-hand side, and we plug that in. So we've got everything plugged in except the battery. Okay, so now we plug in the battery, and you get the normal sort of confirmation beep, and then it all lights up, and it shows you where everything is. Now, uh, this, I've already done some playing around with the timing, so the, you wouldn't have the timing in that particular um, function. I've got it on high. Um, if you uh, had it from the factory, this reset button here sets everything back to the factory defaults. The timing would start out on low. and um, So if you didn't use this, that's what you would have. You also note that on this number seven music and the uh, lipo uh, count or whatever they call it, lipo cells it says there, um, that one is blank because this particular receiver, which, or this particular EFC, which is a Hobbywing Skywalker 60A UBEC uh, V1, uh, that one doesn't have the music set of function and it's not big enough to require uh, the uh, setting the number of cells for the battery. When you get up to huge batteries that have like eight or ten cells or something like that, then you, you, these lights work here for uh, uh, telling how many cells are in the battery. Uh, and for the smaller ones that have the music function, um, by having different combination of lights on this, you can have different uh, musical tunes play when you uh, power up your airplane. So. 
Whistling Dixie or whatever, you know, you can uh, have it do that. But uh, we're not particularly concerned about that. But this timing one, we are concerned about. And um, I like to test that. And, of course, that's why I've got this test rig is to do these things. We measure the thrust and, and we measure the RPM. Uh, and um, I did that a few minutes ago. And as I did so, I found some interesting uh, results. Um, and that is that with a low timing... I got a maximum of 7880 RPM and 2865 grams of thrust. With a medium timing setting, I got 8076 RPM with 2960 grams of thrust. And with a high timing setting, I got 8280 RPM and 3145 grams of thrust. So we increased our thrust by about 10% by going from low to high. Now, at low, it's probably going to be more efficient, and your battery might last a little bit longer. Uh, but if you want maximum power, <laughs> you know, the high is good. But keep in mind, this is with this Dual Sky 5050 EA12 KV610 motor, which has got an awful lot of, uh, of poles, the permanent magnets around the outside here. And with a larger number of poles, it needs a higher uh, timing. Uh, rate. Um, so um, for that particular motor, that's fine. If you have a smaller one, or especially an in-runner, uh, then the low is certainly going to be fine. And if the superpower isn't all that big of a deal for you, um, you're quite happy with a V6 instead of a V8, <laughs> and it's not even that much of a difference, you know, uh, get that 10% extra, uh, then the high timing is good. Okay, um, so we've shown you how you get uh, up and down through the different selections just by pushing the button. When you get to the particular item, uh, like here where I can cut off voltage, if I wanted to change to, um, to low, I'd go over there and click OK and I'd have that. If I want to go back to how things were at the start, I hit that one. Uh, and if I want to go down and keep that high rate of timing, then I would come over here to high, I'd click that one, and of course you get a beep after you've changed something, but uh, once you've got it all done, then all you got to do is unplug it. Now the next question is how do you program it uh, using the um, uh, throttle on your transmitter? Well, uh, if you're going to use a transmitter, that means you're going to use a receiver. It has to communicate with it. So we get our receiver plugged in. Okay, so we got that there. This, by the way, has a little bit shorter lead on it, I think, than some. Of course, I got that turned around that way, so maybe if I had that Velcro down there, uh, it would uh, go around all the way. Uh, but anyway, uh, so with regard to using the uh, transmitter stick, it's going to be pretty much the same sort of procedure that we used for the um, uh, calibrating the throttle at the start, only we're going to leave the stick up. And then we're going to get a series of tones, and when you get to the tone that you want, we've had the stick up at the start, when you hear the number of tones that indicate the item that you want to change, you'll move the stick to the bottom. That it will then give you the selections as to which one you want, either one tone or two tones or three tones. Um, and when you hear the one that you want, you'll move the stick back up to the top. It'll confirm that that's okay. And then it's going to start going through the menu again. So this is another one of those ESCs that doesn't require you to start all over again to set the second item. It just starts going through them again. And when you finally get everything done, uh, the uh, two long tones is to exit. And when you select that one, uh, you'll then uh, be able to unplug the power and you're all done. So we'll just go through um, a bit of that just to um, show you what that does. Okay, so uh, everything is all set to go. We're nice and safe got everything in safe on the transmitter, throttle down and all of that. Uh, actually, we want the throttle up and we want the throttle at 100% and the safety switch in the active position where the throttle is going to work. So the cutoff isn't on. 
We confirm that we've got a hundred plus a hundred on the throttle. Okay, we then plug her in. So you get the two beeps, and that would be where you put it down if you're calibrating the throttle. We get the little ascending tone. Now we have the single beep starting. So the one beep is brake, two beeps, battery type, three beeps, cutoff mode, four beeps, cutoff threshold. One uh, long tone is a startup mode, uh, a long tone and a short tone, and by the way, they, they'll be high and low as well. That'll be timing. Uh, long and too short, set all to default, and two long tones is exit. Okay, so it's starting over again. So let's say we want cutoff mode. So that was three beeps, so I move it down. Then is going to give me the choices for cutoff mode, and I got a soft cut or a complete cutoff. I want the soft cut, which is one. So I hear the one beep. So then that goes up. The melody tells me that it's accepted that. Okay. And now it's going back through, and I could slick, select whichever other one that I wanted and uh, set that. Once we've got uh, all of those done, we wait for the two long beeps. Okay, so I got the four beeps for the four cells in the battery and the long beep that says we're all done and I unplug it, and that is all set. So, that's all there is to it. Pretty simple and straightforward. Thank you for watching. I trust that it's been helpful to you. Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. Doesn't cost anything, and it'll keep everything handy and uh, readily accessible to you. And while you're at it, have a look at some of the other videos that we've got that uh, will uh, provide further help in other areas. So, Happy flying and have a great day.